hi everyone welcome back to my garden i am jen and today i'm going to be continuing on with my fall cleanup uh, there's still so many things that need to be done i think we've been chipping away as much as we can uh, on the days we are free and you know there's just still some things that need to be done um I still need to take down my zinnias in my flower bed and I actually have decided that I think I'm going to be planting some bulbs in that raised bed. Um, I also have a couple of annual pots that need to be disassembled and I also have some perennials that I still have left to plant and the ground is not frozen yet. We've had plenty of cold days here in zone 6b in western New York but also plenty of warmer days so the ground you know i'm still able to plant i'm still able to dig without a problem so i will be you know putting those perennials in somewhere in my garden uh, throughout this week and as much as i can get done today i also usually prune my hydrangeas and you can see that beautiful limelight hydrangea behind me i all i usually prune my hydrangeas in the fall because that is just the time that is the most convenient for me to do that um, in the spring we are usually very busy with sports and i do have my son is graduating high school this year so i know that i don't want all those tasks in the springtime um, you know for my own personal schedule so i still have that yet to do there's i have several hydrangeas so that's kind of a, a big undertaking as well um, I have some things to clean up in the front we have some things that we need to prune back I have to address my front porch I have some things that have died my mom's have kind of kicked the bucket uh, on my front porch so I also want to get to that and I would love for you to join me in my garden so let's go here is what I have left in my corner. I have pretty much handled taking care of everything, but I still have a little pile of goodies here left to address. So you can see this is my annual pot that has finally kind of kicked the bucket. Um, I am going to be putting that Creeping Jenny in my Vinca Vine Village to see if I can overwinter that. And you can see the Calibrecoa still are kind of holding on a little bit, looking good, but I'm ready to disassemble those. And this lemon cypress needs to come inside. If I leave it outside any longer, even though it's kind of protected here in the corner, it's not gonna make it. So I definitely wanna get that inside. I have some echinacea here that we're gonna plant out into the landscape and some more echinacea back in here. And I also have some uh, perennial geraniums. This one's called Bloody Cranesbill. And I also have the Max Free, so we're going to be planting that out as well. Now, you might think, oh my gosh, those plants look awful. Well, they are perennials and they're dying back for the season, but they will come back just beautifully um, in the springtime and look gorgeous all summer too. So you can see they still have some wonderful color. Certain ones have wonderful color, but there's certain ones that Ooh, that one looks a little toasty that are not not looking so great this time of year so let's get started okay I'm gonna bring this into my garage this lemon cypress good morning Lou these are the perennial geraniums that I picked up over the summer towards the end of the season for next to nothing I'm trying to remember how much this says $16, but I know I got it for a lot less than that. It might have been one or two. Oh, actually it was $5. $5. Um, so I have two of the Max Free Perennial Crane Spill. And um, I chose these because I'm very happy with my Geranium Roseanne. I don't know that it's exactly like the Geranium Roseanne, but I thought it could be a nice accent somewhere. It blooms in the summer. This again is the Max Frey Perennial Cranesbill Geranium. Uh, it grows six to 10 inches tall and it's hardy down to zone three. And it says, stunning flowers attract butterflies over a long season. Beautiful in the rock garden as a small scale ground cover or at a garden's edge planted with Siberian iris, garden flocks, bellflowers, and ornaments, ornamental grasses. 
brilliant fall foliage color and these are looking a little bit rough because they've been sitting here in this pot unplanted for quite a while but you can see some of the beautiful fall color this one is a little bit different than the max free it has a different color bloom it's called the bloody cranes bill and it looks like he has it has more of a pale a pale pink bloom let's see what this one says oh it doesn't really have a a description just that it gets four inches tall sun to part shade blooms in the summer and you can see that one also which is this one right here has some nice fall some nice fall foliage so I thought it would be a good idea to put the smaller one towards the front of the bed um, and I just have it underplanted under a limelight hydrangea. You can see these big blooms, these big blooms coming down here. A limelight hydrangea. And it's just in a pretty much full sun location. And it says that they can tolerate sun. They also benefit from a part shade situation. And I feel like once this um, blooms out and leaves out in the springtime, that it could provide also some shelter from you know the full sun exposure as well so i am going to get started on planting these hardy geraniums soil feels easy to dig and moist we've had a few rainy days here and with my clay soil if that's one benefit of clay soil it retains water which you don't always want to have happen but sometimes it is beneficial for your plants if you go through kind of a dry spell okay so i'm noticing too on this plant there are several there are several weeds too that kind of have found their way into this pot so once i get it out of the container I'll see if I can kind of separate those weeds from the plant. Looks pretty good though. There's the root system. I've kept it watered nicely, so that looks pretty good. I'm just going to see if I can pull out any little small, I might even have to take my gloves out for this, any small weeds that found their way. See, there's kind of a one right in the middle there. I always find this clover weed. I'm not quite sure. Maybe it's just called clover, I don't know. That finds its way into my plants. There's another little one there. For the most part, this one looks pretty good. There's a little bit on the end here. And like I said, I really love that fall color on the leaf. And I think it'll just kind of fill in nicely under, underneath the canopy of this hydrangea. See what I mean by the little clover weed? Sometimes that kind of finds its way in. I'll just pull those out. And I always like to use the Biochem Starter Plant Food just to give it a good start to establish the root system. Oh, Lucy's kind of sniffing around there. You like the smell of that, don't you, Luce? Yeah, we'll just rough up the roots here a little bit, but they look great. And we'll plop it into the ground. And we're going to backfill with the native soil. You really want to kind of press down as well to get any air pockets out. Okay. Great. And I think this is the type of, a type of herbaceous peren perennial that will spread eventually and pretty much cover 
cover up this area here, which will be nice. Again, the root system looks really good, nice and loose and not tightly bound. But if you can see, the camera can pick that up. There's that kind of clover-like clover -like weed that I'll be pulling those out. I'm trying to pull those out before we plant it up. Because I don't want to plant all of those little weeds. seems to be just on the outer edge which is which is good and again let me just bring this up here and show you the beautiful fall beautiful fall color on that leaf And here's what we ended up with four geraniums, perennial geraniums planted underneath this beautiful limelight. Look how beautiful it still looks, even though the blooms are crispy and brown. Still really looks beautiful. This one has some pink to it still. And it'll be underplanted with these geraniums, so hopefully. These will take off and complement complement the hydrangea. We'll see how I feel about it um, next spring and summer. I guess this is turning into more of a fall planting, uh, which is actually part of my fall cleanup. You know, just getting those last minute things in the ground is is actually part of my fall cleanup, but technically we're planting here. Uh, next up, I have a bunch of echinacea. I'm going to start with these two here that are when I purchased these two, oh goodness, they looked so beautiful. So they're the lovely Lolly Echinacea. Let me show you their tag. They're just beautiful. It says unique, lovely pink flowers atop elegant stems that are deep purple, making this Echinacea truly wonder one of a kind. Great performance, blooming June to October. And I think that's what attracted to, uh, me to this echinacea when I saw it in the nursery. It was the stem. It was such a um, darker color. It wasn't like your typical green color. It was like that dark magenta purple color. And I felt like the stem also kind of had like sort of a wavy appearance to it. And then it had the beautiful, the beautiful pink bloom on top. I think there is one. See, there's a little bloom trying to happen on this one, but I'll also pop a picture up of what they look like when they're not out of season. So these get a little bit taller, um, 20 to 24 inches tall, 14 to 16 inches wide, and they prefer full sun. So I'm going to pop them in the back there 
right next to the shed door on either side. I'll put one over on the other side as well. And because they get taller, I just want them to be towards the back there. I think they'll get enough sun back there. Um, I also have this beautiful Proven Winners Echinacea Coneflower as well. This is the Double Coated Butter Pecan. And I really loved the pom-pom look of the flower on that one. These also get fairly tall, 18 to 20 inches tall. And let's see if I can tell you about these. They feature a four inch wide soft melon flower. They are fully double, prolific floral production, seeded atop dense rosettes of foliage. So not quite sure where I'm putting those yet. I may stick them right in the front here. Um, right in the front on either side, although I do have three. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see as we go. Looks pretty good, not too root bound. And I think that's deep enough. I remember planting echinacea back here last fall. It was another proven winner's kind. And they did not survive. They totally didn't even root. And I wondered if some kind of a critter came by and dug them up and ate them. I wasn't sure. But we're going to try again with this lovely lolly. I'm just going to kind of surround it with mulch just so it's protected. And we will hope for the best. I've decided I'm going to put these right up front here in this bed. Right on the corner on either side. is a little dry. Definitely needs to be watered. And I will give everything a very good water upon planting here. I just rounded the corner on the side of my shed and I still have one more of the Proven Winners Double Coated Butter Pecan Perennial Echinacea. And I think what I'm going to do is place it right in this back corner here. I think it'll look good. It's kind of hard to kneel down here. I don't want to squish anything. Go underneath this dwarf Alberta spruce. Excuse me. Excuse me, everybody. All right. We'll try right on the corner here. Maybe like right on the corner here might be good. Just back up a little bit. down just a little bit. I'm 
sometimes it's hard to tell, you know, if you're going to plant something in the right spot or not. At least for me, it can be a challenge. So you just try your best and find comfort in knowing that it's your garden. If you want to make a change, you can make a change. And it's okay to try things out and not get it right the first time. I just, that's one thing I love about working in the garden is just the freedom that you have to be in your own space, working in the dirt, working in the soil, creating something, being creative, and no one is over your shoulder, you know, correcting you, telling you how to do things. It's just your own, your very own creative space. I always invite you, though, to weigh in and comment. So let me know what you think. It's right next to this Dolce Wildberry Hookera, kind of a backdrop for that. So hopefully... It'll kind of catch some sun from this side and from that and from this side here. It won't be too blocked by this because it'll catch it on the sides too. So, okay. I'm just gonna give these window boxes a little drink. While I'm here, because I have been slacking off with my watering, when it gets super cold out, I just stop watering. <laughs> I just don't find myself wanting to go out and water, and my husband has put away the hose on the one side of the house, so that's made me kind of slack off with watering in the front. So these moms, these moms needed a little drink. Can't forget our birds. Okay, this is the bird seed I've been using as of late. The brand name is Audubon Park, and it attracts cardinals, grassbeak, sparrows, towhees, morning doves, quail, buntings, and others. It's made in the USA, the good old USA. And let's see if I can tell you what's in it. White prosso millet. Black oil, sunflower seed, cracked corn, safflower seed, striped sunflower seed. So we'll just give our birds a quick refill. And I'll give this one, this one still has some in it, but I'll just kind of top it off.
well, I ran out of time. <laughs> I've been out here for maybe an hour, hour and a half. I set my timer usually so I don't get too sidetracked, um, but I do have to move on to other things. So that's going to be all for today. A little bit of fall cleanup, fall planting, and I'll be back. I'll be back, you know, real soon with another video because I still have so much to do and I so enjoy sharing with you. Um, I enjoy sharing my time in the garden with you and I hope you enjoy spending it with me. I really appreciate everyone, all of my subscribers. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. We'll see you again in my next video. Bye-bye.